All right, Steven Zeiler, founder of AnyPay. It's good to talk to you, man. Thanks for uh, agreeing to come on. Um, it's been, uh, when was the last time we saw each other? Pork Fest, right? Yeah, so and Armani. So, yeah, so it's been some, it's been some months. Um, yeah, your name came up. It was kind of synchronicitous. You, you reached out recently and told me about some of the new stuff you'd been doing at AnyPay. Of course, we talk regularly, and we'll talk about why, about the integrations that we have between our two companies. But I was in Australia, and Naomi Brockwell, who I guess had never used Cointext before, was so excited about, which is weird because we've, t- she knows me, we've talked, I'm sure that I've sent her some money on Cointex before, but I guess she had never really used it. And um, she said, oh my God, I'm so excited. And now I really want to talk to you about Cointex because I went to this really cool party in New Hampshire that uh, Steven Zeiler was doing and Derek J. Freeman. And like, she was telling me all of this stuff. And then you reached out to me and said, oh, this, this party. And you had kind of told me about this space disco thing. And so I was wondering, could you, so that people could get an idea, because I think that it, it will, I haven't heard the story yet about the party. I don't know the full story. But I think it will give people a good uh, sort of a, a glimpse at your overall vibe. So by way of introduction, can you tell us about this, this party, and then why was Naomi so excited about Cointext? <laughs> well, she, she was very excited because we did some unique things with Cointext. But first, in order to really set the stage, I have to ask you, have you ever considered, and I think the an- I know the answer, <laughs> have you considered going to space? Like, yes, outer abs- space? Absolutely, I have, yes. Great, cool. Yeah, so that's what, sp- then Space Disco is for you. The idea is that there are a bunch of us who want to go to space. And I, personally, I must. It's, it's basically the last thing I have to do. Um, uh, so in this life is go to space. So we all want to go to space. But there's also a subset of us who are really into nightclubs and discos and dance parties and loud music. So the idea is that we're going to space for real. And we're bringing a disco. Okay. And, and that's Space Disco, and that's our mission. And it's a more or less 10-year mission to get to space and have a disco and become the space party company. I love it. <laughs> no, I've, I've often <laughs> said that like, so the, the, my favorite vibe, what I tell people my favorite vibe is, is I, I tell people it's strip club on a space station. Like I, there's, there's this sort of like energy. So that's like, that's, that's to me, like what the most chilled out thing could possibly be. Like, I want this like very futuristic, very like sexy thing, but then I want to be looking out at the stars and looking down on the earth. So like I'm fully in, I'm fully in with the space disco thing. So, so you did something, I mean, you guys are always doing cool things with crypto. You have been for a long time. And I mean, that that's, you know, I'm interested to hear all the stuff that AnyPay is doing. So Naomi said that you were doing something, something with Cointex and some other things. So how did that, what, what happened in the space disco with that? Right. Well, in order to get into the space disco, it's, it's different because we have, a, we have a different mission than other, pretty much every other disco around. And, and so we need to be really high tech and futuristic, for instance. In space, you can't use fiat money. It's too slow. It's not good enough. We have to use 21st century money, you know, space money. So it's it's a Bitcoin cash only. It's a Bitcoin only venue and party where everything you can get, including tickets and massages and whatever else you want to get, it's Bitcoin only. And that's that's kind of how I generally operate in life and have created some fun things because of that. And um, yeah, so about, about the text message, in order to get in, you have to have this special ticket, but it's a, it's a GIF. It's a special GIF. And that's a, a moving image. You know that. People have it. And um, in order to get the GIF, you have to interact with a, a text message robot who is our onboard flight assistant at the Space Disco. That's cool. Yeah. And so you have to, you have to text this robot and um, it will provide information to you. It will give you tickets. It might even give you some Bitcoin if you're a first-time Bitcoin cash user and you don't have a wallet. Oh, that's kind of cool. So, yeah. there, so there you go. So there's like the perfect use case. Yeah, it, it, it was really cool, actually. So this is, this is 
the plan is to have these all the time and eventually get to space. Like first we're starting at our launch pad here in, in Portsmouth, but we're eventually going to rent out planes. You know how they do that? Like they go up really steep and then they go down really steep and it simulates oh, zero yeah. gravity. The vomit yeah. comet. I think they call that the vomit comet. The vomit comet. That's right. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to rent, rent out one of these or, or a series of these and have parties that are in zero gravity. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, that's that because we need to get higher and higher into the atmosphere until we're in space. Now, a side note: I saw recently someone's launching a space hotel, and their timeline is five years. Wow, that seems um, that seems pretty quick to me. Five I, years. I know. I think things are happening fast. So this is why we have a ten-year plan with Space Disco. Anyway, so so you have to text this this thing. You want to try it? What, right should, now? Yeah, you should text the onboard flight assistant. Okay, let me text the onboard flight. I've got my I've got my phone here. Yeah, me, it uses SMS. Okay. Um, so what do I need to do? Who yeah, do you I text this phone number, 207. Okay. 360. Okay. 8754. Okay. So you're familiar with this kind of thing because you make coin yeah. text, obviously. Yeah, but text, yeah, yeah. text it the word disco. Okay. Disco. Okay. Oh, I think I, I think I had texted it before, and it told me we're going to space, and we are bringing. Oh, and we are bringing a disco. Prepare to move your body. Oh my goodness. Oh wow, cool. Present your boarding pass at the gate. And it's a little world. Oh my god, that's cool. People could see. <laughs> Pretty it, cool, it's a, man. It's a gift. So that, that was the first thing. So people were texting this and then they get registered into the space disco system automatically um, and then they can interact with it. Oh, and so cool. that, that was how they can get into like the, the observation deck of the party, which is upstairs at this theater, it's a super cool theater. It's an actually underground theater. You oh, walk wow. in though and the, the upstairs is above ground and uh, it's right in downtown Portsmouth. So you can get in there, um, but in order to get anything, a massage, a drink, you know, a protein shake, whatever you want, you have to have Bitcoin. And mm -hmm. most people didn't have that, so they had to interact with the system to get more Bitcoin. Um, and they do that. And in order to do that, you have to upgrade. Oh, nice. To okay. premier level. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... We're actually, this, the plan here is to use an actual ship. It's called the ECV Precariat. You may have met some of these people who are designing this ship. Uh, Wait, a spaceship? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's called, <laughs> it's called the ECV pre Precariat. You can, you can see more information about it at pirateswithoutborders.com. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> at the, go to the top left corner of pirateswithoutborders.com. And you can see all about the ECV Precariat. There's like 3D renderings and videos of it. And it's being, it's being designed um, by people this, involved. This sounds with like a very like Burning Man type of thing. These sound like the type of people that I would meet at Burning Man. Are these it, people burners? They're Liberty Radio Network people. Okay, yes, it, LRN. Okay, great, great, great. <laughs> Just as yeah. good. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a, a cross because they're out in Arizona. Um, oh, so they probably are burners if they're out in Arizona. Yeah, yeah okay. I think they're involved. Yeah, awesome. it's, awesome. it's, it's Ernie Hancock and those guys. Okay, cool. Um, cool. So we've been, we're getting, they want, so we want the Space Disco thing. They've got the ECV Precariat. We've decided to collaborate and put the Space Disco into the ECV Precariat. And so we got, we, we got level 15. And you can see, if you watch the video, if you watch <laughs> the video, we, we ask them, we know, where should, where should the, the disco be, you know? And um, yeah, space, space strip club. So they said level 15 <laughs> and, and you can see it on the video level 15. It's pretty sweet. And then also the observation deck. And so you come into the observation deck, you need Bitcoin. If you want to upgrade, you have to, you have to text upgrade. Okay, to, well, I can do the, that now? Yeah, to the onboard flight assistant. Okay, let me see. All right, hold on. Upgrade. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's see. Upgrade. Somebody's, I'm hearing dinging. 
I'm hearing dinging. That usually is a, is a sign of that money is is uh, happening. <laughs> Sadly, it, it, it's some it's something else. One um, moment while we check on your upgrade, and it looks like I may have gotten another one. Oh, present to gate attendant for upgrade to premier class. That's awesome. Cool. So that QR code is unique to you. Okay. Right. And um, you can upgrade to premier class by going to one of the other. Uh, your crew members okay, okay. so okay. some of your crew members have an app on their phone okay. okay um and and that app is called the space disco scanner okay it's very simple but what it okay. does is it's a scanner it's okay. like it's like uh a, a, the communicator in star trek you know okay so in order to the way it works it's very simple it can scan any qr code Okay. And then things happen. Like it just, it scans in and then the system, depending on what data it scans, it okay. will trigger different events. So it will say, congratulations, you've been upgraded to premier level and that you have to use Bitcoin cash for everything. Okay. And you're about to receive some Bitcoin cash. Okay. And then you receive a coin text. Oh, wow. So, okay. So that's why Naomi was so excited. Okay. Yeah. Got it. That's such it, a great use. That is such a great uh, application for the tech. And then wow, you receive cool. a coin text with $10. Oh, wow. That's good. Right. That'll work. And then, and then so there were a bunch of people, I would say only 10 to 20% of people at this party had ever used Bitcoin Cash. Mm-hmm. 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 And so, but a hundred percent of people received Bitcoin cash and used it pretty much because of the bar and everything we had any pay set up and it was right. any pay only. Right. Oh, which uh, is integrated with coin text. And so That's they were right. using it to buy drinks. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That's a great, great use case. Okay. So this, so this, this is super cool. Like I, I love you. You have been on. You and Derek, who's your co-founder there with AnyPay, but also other things that you guys have done in, in New Hampshire and elsewhere. Um, you guys have, have been on very much the cutting edge of doing cool, fun things that, that involve people. You've onboarded so many people on all sides. Um, the Bitcoin shop was it, something that became legendary that you guys were were doing in uh, Portsmouth. Um, and then with AnyPay, you've onboarded so many merchants. You told me that you are, you, you've got a goal of, uh, did you say a thousand merchants? You've got a thousand merchant goal coming up? A thousand merchants in New Hampshire by July 15, 2020. Okay. So that's our goal. A thousand in New Hampshire. Now there are there are already a lot, and I mean in the in Portsmouth, it's kind of awesome because you can walk around and you can just use it, and and it's any pay systems when you go. What I wanted to talk with you about, um, because it's it's something that I, I that we have really vibed on, and obviously we're sort of on this same path of like, what are these cool, interesting, outside the box things that we can do that show off Bitcoin, that show off cryptocurrency in ways that only only uh, crypto can in working with any pay one of the things that's that's i know that you have some some things coming up but one of the things that has been interesting to me and it's been something that like i've seen as the quintessential problem that almost nobody knows about is we need payment processors we need people like you who are out there who are onboarding who are incentivized to do that but at the same time we need to have uh the incentives need to be monetary as well. And I think a lot of us are out here and we're working for the good of, you know, the ideological good of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency because we believe in liberty and we want more freedom for the world. But at the same time, people got to eat too. And so I'm interested, you know, I know you guys are now moving toward uh, a revenue model, at least experimenting with the revenue models that I've been talking about. We've gone back and forth. We've obviously integrated our companies in various different ways to work on this and talked about it a lot. Can you talk about for us sort of like your progression with AnyPay in terms of looking for revenue models, trying to, to, you know, seeing how can you generate income as well as provide this amazing service? Like, can you talk to us about what that journey 
is like? Because I think it's something that most people don't even realize and think about. Yeah, definitely. You know, how, how do we pay the bills? How do we, you know, how, how do I get my brilliant programmers and other people to spend all their time thinking about Bitcoin every day rather than going to work on some like, I don't know, Washington Mutual or something, some company that that isn't so cool. Um, and that's important because there's a lot of expenses involved, you know, even just keeping these lights on and, and everything. Um, but how do, how do we get to pay for everything? And any pay and, and in, in building this system, I, I've been building this for a long time and in thinking about talking to you about this, I was thinking, when did I really start any pay and start getting, getting financing this system? Essentially, we, we, we're at almost 200 businesses now around the world that are using AnyPay. And um, I've had a bunch of different ways of getting revenue over the years since 2016 um, when I really started. And the, the concept for AnyPay for me, I, I, I think, really goes back to 2014. I gave this speech at the Texas Bitcoin Conference. And um, I had this vision. I was working at Ripple Labs. Um, or uh, open coin maybe is what it was called back then. And um, I had this vision where you could go to the grocery store. It was HEB is the local grocery store in Austin. And you could pay with silver, like digital silver. And the, the grocery store receives dollars or whatever they want. Um, that, and that was my vision that anyone could pay with any kind of value that they wanted. And um, the person they're paying gets, gets whatever they want. And I didn't realize at the time in 2014 that I needed to start a company that employed people and had our own intellectual property and, and everything had a brand. I didn't know that. Um, but I, I realized that between then and 2016 and started making, started realizing I needed to have a company and a brand. And um, in 2016 came up with the AnyPay brand concept and made some software. I was like, how do I make money? I, I made some software and sold it. I sold a brand um, to, to pay for some things. And then when I got together with Derek, we were experimenting with making like SaaS, uh, SaaS products for like accounting firms. So we were doing so this. software as a service for people who don't know software as a service. Right. Products, yeah. yeah. So we, we like, we did this training program on how to build software as a service and sell it we were like selling to accounting firms and we were looking to get monthly revenue, like uh, recurring income from software. So then we thought we could apply that software as a service model potentially to companies, which, which we called cryptocurrency companies or uh, coin companies that were actually just during the last coin boom, all these different coins, they, there was like, there's like, organizations behind them who want to promote their coins. So we thought we could make software that would help these coin companies get their coins used by retail businesses and they could pay us like a monthly subscription. Okay. Um, that was the idea. And we weren't very successful at selling that idea to them. Um, they always, they always wanted to pay like upfront some money to integrate into the, into our system and then be done with it. Um, so that, that financed us for a while. Um, like we, we had some contracts with Dash and Smart Cash, Horizon and um, Zcash and a um, bunch of other ones that, you know, they paid us to integrate basically. Um, which was, right. it's kind of good because we, we grew our platform and we were able to become more stable, get more, just do more advertising, do more marketing and everything and, and grow. Um, but a little easier the, to easier to do that when the the market is pumping, right? Like way easier to do that in a bull market than a bear market. Definitely, and also it's very questionable whether this is helping anyone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's we we're not just trying to pay the bills. We want to get like magnificently rich. So we, in order to do that, like we have to be able to serve billions of people and really help a lot of people. Uh, solve problems in their lives. And it didn't seem like, like adding more coins was necessary. I don't know. Um, anyway, it was a really hard way to go and it didn't seem very scalable. Um, 
so yeah, in the meantime, while this AnyPay business has been going and the soft, the software side, and when I, I was living in San Francisco and I was working at Ripple and I really wanted to start a Bitcoin vending machine company that are like a Bitcoin ATM company that sells and buys cash for Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was really awful out there. Like it, it didn't seem like I was going to be able to pull, pull it off because of the restrictions on the economy. Um, and the, especially around like vending, I, I, I don't like to gather a whole lot of information on people and, um, uh, I'm kind of like a, you know, libertarian person. So, uh, I like privacy. And anyway, when I moved to New Hampshire, I learned that it, it's like unregulated. It's deregulated in New Hampshire, Bitcoin and um, right. like cash sales of things. There's no taxes. There's no like requirements for, for stuff. So I immediately started buying these Bitcoin machines. Uh, I'm looking around. Sorry. I, there's some in the office here. <laughs> and um and like putting them up in businesses and buying and selling cash for Bitcoins. And that actually has been really good. That's the most profitable thing that we have that pays the bills. Sorry, on my computer All battery. Good. All good. Yeah, so we've been selling Bitcoin and, um, and cash. And it turns out that people really want liquidity for cash, paper cash. And we're getting more machines and they're going up into more places in more towns. Hmm. And um, it really helps because people want, like they really want Bitcoin and they're willing to pay a lot of money for it. Hmm. What do you, what is the, uh, is the, is the main use of the people who are using the ATMs, vending machines? Is that, is that main use, uh, holding you think? No, uh, I don't think it's holding at all. I think the main use is using, mm. it's like sending money overseas to scammers right, right. and stuff. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to know. Um, yeah. and, and it's, it's mainly because I don't want, well, it's partly because I don't want to know, but also I don't care. Like I got other stuff to do. Uh, right. I have, I have machines because they're machines. Right. And they, they right. just, they just automatically work. Um, and it's fun and challenging. And uh, like we have to match flows if people buy a bunch of Bitcoins and we have to buy a bunch more Bitcoins to get, you know, um, and that helps too, because also we're able to offer the businesses around town that are accepting Bitcoin through any pay, we can offer them, we'll buy their Bitcoins for cash if they need. Right, so you, so you can be their liquidity provider. That's right, yeah. And yeah, we're gonna do that. Basically, that's the only way we're going to get to a thousand real businesses in New Hampshire is by buying all the Bitcoin. Um, and some other really creative things that I'm working on that are, that are less straightforward and less obvious. So, you know, we know the exchange business model uh, has been there and it's clearly, it's a good one. And I've been a fan of uh, Bitcoin ATMs for, I mean, I think that that's really like, it's really important. Those machines are super important. And, um, you know, I think that a states like New Hampshire that make it easier for people to operate them is really, really key. And it's awesome. And it's, it's one of the things that I love about, uh, the state laws in New Hampshire regarding um, cryptocurrency exchange. Now, in terms of other business models, so you got any pay, you've got the point of sale system. Difficult to find point of sale business models that are non-custodial. I think this has been something that people have struggled with for a long time. Obviously, when you're like BitPay or Coinbase, well, the business model is we charge a percentage and we keep a percentage from out of whatever sales you make. Any pay, on the other hand, approaching it as a, a real Bitcoin business is at Bitcoin as peer-to-peer -peer cash is saying, well, no, it's your, it's your money. We're providing you a platform, but it's your money. It's going to go from the consumer and it's going to go directly to you. It's not going to pass through us. We're not going to take the, this uh, commission or percentage can you talk a little bit about, because uh, obviously this has been something I've been focused on. This is something, you know, with Cointex that we 
you know, we, t- we, we do what I call the 12 words. It's, I, I call it the non-custodial financial services, 12 words. And it's, we take a small fee as an additional output in every transaction. Those 12 words. We take a small fee as an additional output in every transaction. We take I, a small fee as an additional output in every transaction. That's it. Yeah. So, so you guys are moving toward that model as well. That's right. Yeah. Every transaction is a service we're providing to the customer and they have all expressed um, that they would love to pay us a small amount for that service. Yeah. Um, so that, that's really good. I, I want to, so the, the non-custodial fee in every transaction makes, ton, makes tons of sense. Um, obviously you need very large scale if, well, it depends on how large the fees are going to be. If it's a, like, they could be pretty high for certain types of transactions. Um, but in general, the multi-output transaction is really awesome. And it's like, it's such the most straightforward way of making profits through, through a software system. Um, it's so good. And if you have it at scale, which that's our plan, any pay, uh, our plan is to make software that anyone can use with basically zero barriers and zero cost at all so that everyone in the world can use it. And then we can, then we have the scale where we can have a, a big profitable worldwide business with just small payments. Um, but it has to, it has to start foundation foundationally with totally free, you know, Bitcoin cash can be totally peer to peer. There's no reason. F- there's no reason for there to be a, a payment processor company in between it's really just that you need an app and that app like the AnyPay app is so basic mm-hmm. um, i mean there's countless hours of ux and everything put, put into it but it, it's really basic um i mean one of the things that i find so interesting though is the fact that you know pretty much every wallet nowadays does um multi-output transactions already because they're sending a change output right like if you if if you have to send change and you're sending to the person so you're already sending a multi-output transaction it's been so weird to me that the uptake or the idea and as you say it seems like to me it seems like such a no-brainer that it's like well we're already doing multiple outputs why don't we just add another output and it costs like nothing it costs like well it's because the wallet's not an output like if they don't they don't see it yet that they can write themselves and then they get money. But it seems so obvious, right? It seems like the second that you see it, you're like, Oh yeah. And of, and of, of course it takes payment protocols to do it. Right. Cause you can't really, especially if you're on the, um, the merchant app side, you have to be able to communicate multiple outputs, which you can't do uh, off just the standard, like bit 21 QR code, which is the QR code that most people have. Right. But it's, it seems to me that like, you know, your business is one of the first to adopt this, which is not, I mean, Bit, BitPay uses Bit70 payment protocols, but they've locked it down to one address, which is already like, wow, it's like they missed it. They totally, right. could, have, they totally could have added this in and they could have eliminated, they could have like eliminated all of their regulatory burden. Like they, no, they, can't, they couldn't because they came before. Mm. BitPay bit is very old. And I think I, the genesis of BitPay has to come from before Bitcoin itself um, and the people who were involved in financing it. So they already had the plan way before. So that they, they I, this is something I'm worried about with AnyPay is if we, if we get involved with converting and making our business model around converting coins, then we won't be finding the, the value that we can provide outside of just converting coins. Um, like, because we, we want to provide little pieces of value to businesses at every step and get fees there. And that will actually transform the way that we live with technology. Um, but if our business just does really well with like just converting dollars to Bitcoins, then it, it's a worry. I don't know if, this, if that makes sense. No, I think it makes total sense. And it's something that I've been seeing too. And I've been trying to articulate it. This idea that it, because what you're talking about is a custodial business model, right? If it's, if you're converting coins, you're basically, you, it's a bank, like it's a bank business model. And we've had that business model for a long time and we kind of know what that looks like. And it's almost like once we start into that pattern, 
well, we know what that's going to be. We know what that business evolves into. It just evolves into a bigger and bigger bank. But as you say, providing those additional outside of the box ideas, like the space disco, like all, how can we do these other things for the merchants and for the customers that makes the experience better? You, banks don't seem, custodians don't seem interested in doing that. They never have. I mean, dealing with the bank is no fun. Right. And, and you, you say that it, it, it's like being a bank, but I, I really see it more like being, it's even more boring than that. It's, it's, like, it's like being a Bitcoin store that just buys Bitcoins or sells cash or buys cash. Like, a, like, like one of those money converters like in the airport. Like a currency. Yeah, that's, yeah exactly. That's what, that's all it, no, that really, and like, and like the Bitcoin machine that I have, it just, you know, it converts one to another. So it's not really a bank. I'm not really, I'm not really worried about it growing to be this evil, awful thing. It's just boring and it's not as, it's not as interesting as some of the other things. So like, because Bitcoin, the blo- because of the blockchain, uh, we have a lot of security and um, authenticity with information and money. I think there are a lot of cooler ways that we can like eliminate fraud and, and make people's lives more clear and well accounted for. Like this is something that I've been, I don't know why I'm obsessed with this, but tipping and paying for service, yeah. um, ser- service people. It's, it's, I'm, I don't know why, but I'm always thinking about this maybe because I just love service people, but always tipping. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how can I get, like money to the person that did me the service without it being like split up and give to given to like yes. collectively to these other people or with like, or without it just going right to the, the business owner. Like I never know. Um, and this is the kind of like lack of, of uh, clarity that the blockchain solves. And this is kind of really weird, but you know, if, if I can get money directly to a person to a Bitcoin account, that I know that they got that money and that like um, just other ways that can solve like fraud or, or miss clarity. Okay. So back to the space disco. Oh, okay. Here, this actually happened. <laughs> okay. So you're going to like this. This is a multi output thing with space disco and we didn't yet have BIP 70 implemented, unfortunately, because, uh, well, it's hard. Like not all the wallets do it right. Um, it is, and that is one thing that people should realize is that it is very hard to get it in. Once you get it in, it is solid, but it is very hard to get it right. That is, there is no joke about that. So we have a, a temporary workaround, which we call an any pay, they're a split address. And the idea is basically any pay routes payments from one address to another. Um, and this is a new feature in our routing system where you get one Bitcoin cash address and whenever you receive a payment, it gets split evenly in ways and sent out to everyone. So at Space Disco, uh, every time someone paid with Bitcoin cash and everything they paid with, bit for, with Bitcoin cash, it went to AnyPay and then was split out to these five addresses in, like instantly in real time. The bartender, the house, the party um, promoter, the DJ, and the manager of the place that night all had Bitcoin wallets, and it split out five ways to each of them. Sorry, one of those one of those is a Bitcoin account which we're using to save up to buy nicer um, hand towel dispensers. At the, so, so at you the also had a savings account. By the way, I have to tell you that what you just just described is like. That is my ultimate vision for what I believe Bitcoin can be. I mean, we're totally aligned yeah. on this and it's awesome that you guys did it. And what's interesting is that when I describe this vision and I've been describing this, this, this for years, it is usually a, a bar that I describe or a restaurant because I mm-hmm. think that that's the ultimate, right? And, and, you know, that it's like it pays the server and it pays the bartender and it pays the manager and it pays the light bill and it pays the supplier of the beer. And, it, you know, all of these things that potentially you could pay like this entire supply line. And I, I just, I think that it is awesome that, that you guys are implementing this because I feel like when people ask like what makes Bitcoin valuable or what are the things that Bitcoin can do that no other money can do, 
it's not you hold it and you sit on it. It's that you do stuff exactly what you describe. That's what empowers the world, I think. Well, well to be fair, the, the holding and sitting, basically, how much money do I have? <laughs> like Bitcoin actually made that, solve that sure. problem a little better. Sure, yes. I think, for a lo- I think for a lot of us, that's been true. I'm not, I'm not saying that there is anything wrong with, uh, with the price appreciating. Um, but, but I think that at a certain point, and especially as the price starts to stabilize that where the, where this value is beyond the value for me, right? Where the value is that can be delivered to the entire world and how it can change the paradigm of how people live on a day-to-day basis. I think it's in, I think it's primarily in what you described. That's what I, that's what I've come to believe. Well, I think, I I think it's really simple. It's, it's the same value that we can provide with software generally. Um, and then multiply that times money. Mm. Um, so it was, and you know, I mean, you know how much value we can provide with software and Mm -hmm. how, how our whole world is transforming right, right in front of us because of Mm. that. And then you add, you add programmable money to that and we can solve even more, like just way more problems. Yeah. I think that's the huge part is the programmable aspect. I think that it's unfortunately um, there's just not that many people who are very interested in taking it to the places that it can go. Um, You guys are definitely doing that. And it's like, it's awesome. Uh, By the way, I will be in New Hampshire next week. I'll be in, I'll actually be in Portsmouth next week. So if you guys are around, it'd be awesome to, it'd be awesome to grab a drink for sure. Of course, we'll come in and uh, come over to our lounge and we'll get a drink. That'll be yeah. cool. And when people are in uh, New Hampshire and they should definitely go to Portsmouth, they can uh, get their own drinks uh, with Bitcoin and with Bitcoin Cash at a whole bunch of AnyPay spots. So that's really, really cool. And everybody should go do that. And uh, so, so tell people if they want to check out AnyPay and they want to use the, uh, the point of sale and the other services that you got, how can they do that? Oh yeah, search for any pay, A N Y P A Y, in the App Store. You can search for it in the Play Store, and on Twitter, and in the search engine, it will come right up. A N Y P A Y. Cool. Thanks for having uh, me, Ben. Yeah, absolutely. It's written there behind you. Thank you for coming on. Um, yeah, and I can't wait for all the stuff that you guys are doing. It's it's super awesome, and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to see all of these c- things coming to fruition. So I just wanted to thank you for all, all your hard work at that. I'll see you soon. All right, man. Thank you. Ciao.